mistakes that I have made Or any of the things that cause me pain I am not the pieces of the dream I left behind So we're going to get ready to just hop into this conversation. Uh, it's a conversation that I uh, myself have dealt with. I deal with it. It's something true. It's something uh, very real. Um, depression is something that, in my experience, is not talked about, and not just not talked about. It's not understood. Uh, it's not understood on so many different levels. And so this talk is just to share with some people that may not understand depression and uh, know people that go through depression and don't know how to uh, interact with them or don't know how they can be a help to them. Uh, also, this conversation is for those that are going through depression and they feel like um, there is no hope for them. They don't know what to do. They've been going through it. Um, and I actually, since I, uh, a couple months ago, kind of shared um, that I deal with depression, I go through, uh, I have dealt with depression. Actually, a couple of people that are close to me have come to me and said, you know what, I'm going through this and I don't know what to do and I'm ready to give up. And, it, you know, in that, and then also hearing about um, all the other suicides where people have committed suicide because of depression in the last month, it weighed on me that, you know, it's time out, it's time out for me to wait for someone to open up their door, open up their conversation to have with people um, uh, where people can understand and they can understand how to cope with it, understand that uh, depression has many faces. Depression does not choose um, an individual based on their looks. So in this quick short talk, so I'm going to kind of give a quick rundown or a background of my experiences um, dealing with depression. Um, this again is my experience. This is my testimony. This is my journey. Uh, so if these are not your experiences that again, this is mine. Um, if you don't agree with something that I said, again, this is my journey. These are my experiences, uh, because some of my experiences I already know are going to rub some people the wrong way because some of my experience were triggered by, uh, by the church. It's just, it is what it is. It's not to blame anybody. It's not to blame the church or whatever the case may be, but it is what it is. And I really think that uh, somebody needs to be, it's time for someone to be strong enough to stand up and say, you know what? Prayer just don't get it by itself. Prayer does not get it by itself. When dealing with depression, you need, you have to have more than prayer. So again, this is my belief. Again, my belief is I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. I am not having this talk to try to convert convert anybody over to Christianity to believe in God. Uh, this is just an informational session to just try to get people information, get people help on both ends of the spectrum from people dealing with depression to let them know that you do have somebody out here in the world that's dealing with what you're dealing with that have gone through some of the dark, darkest moments that you may be feeling right now and to know that there is hope. Um, and that's my biggest thing. You know, it's, it's not to convert anybody, you know, to the left or to the right. And also it's for, for individuals that may have had people in their family that have lost the battle to uh, depression and don't know, you know, you know, have those questions of what could I have done or, you know, or feeling bad, or even you may have somebody around you that say, you know, I'm dealing with depression. And you can, and that's another thing too about depression. Depression is kind of glazed over. And what I mean by that is glazed over by talking about uh, antidepressants you can get on, this and that. But it's more than uh, just taking a pill. It's more than just prayer. It's like to, in order to, to cope with depression, in order to make it, through to the other side of living with and then that 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 possibility of completely been being set free or broken broken away or detached from depression is going to take work um and again uh, even in my journey where i am now i still deal with it i'm still learning coping me mechanisms to deal with my depression uh, just because 
uh, you see me here now being transparent and sharing uh, does not mean that, you know, uh, all is well. All is well to the extent. Don't, don't get me, don't get that, Mrs. Drew. Let me, let me kind of clean it up. I'm not saying that I am um, where I used to be because I used to be in some dark, dark places. Uh, so, and that's another thing is like, I want people to know that depression, let's just hop into it. So, so let, let me give a, a quick background of, of me. Um, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, uh, for those that don't know. Um, grew up in church, Pentecostal, holiness, hallelujah, holiness or nothing, as, as the saying would go growing up. Uh, grew up uh, prayer, fasting, uh, all that. So on the church side of it, I understand all that. Um, went through a couple of traumas in my life that actually triggered depression uh, at a young age. My first trauma that I experienced, um, I believe I was 14. And just so it was not a sexual trauma. No, it wasn't a sexual trauma at all. Uh, it was just a trauma that that has stuck with me and I've had, I've worked through it. Um, I've acknowledged some things about it. Um, so yeah, my first trauma was at 14. Uh, again, as, as many people know, um, when you're dealing with depression, um, when you're dealing with depression, that and you grew up in the church. So that's what I'm going with. So if you're dealing with depression, you grew up in church, nine times out of 10, you're told that, you know, you just need to, you, you need prayer. You need to fast it away. Uh, so, and then also depression growing up, I was taught, or my belief was that if you're depressed, you're crazy. If you're depressed, uh, again, you're demon possessed. If you're depressed, black people don't do depression. There's just black people in the hood. We don't do depression. That was just a saying. Not saying it's true. I'm just saying that was one that was one of the sayings. You know, black people, we strong. We don't deal with depression. You know, we don't go see a counselor. We don't we go talk to the pastor. We go talk to auntie. We go talk and and that in itself, um, is 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 that mindset is totally, totally something that 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 we as a people, not even just black people, we as a people need to get away from because when you're dealing with depression. And I'm going to say this, and if it offends somebody, it does. Whatever. This is just the truth. When you're dealing with depression, your pastor is not the person to go, go to if your pastor has never dealt with or has an understanding of the, 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 the conflicts, of the, the, the physical um, things that come along with depression. Because the depression, when you're going through depression, depression can affect you. It doesn't just affect you mentally. It affects you physically. Going through depression is literally like going through being like having a flu. Like your body goes through aches. You you know your your system uh, has all these this 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 the stuff that it does to try to ward off what it thinks uh, is like an ailment. So you know uh, you have those, and I think people uh, some people don't understand that when you go through depression, depression is more than just mental. Mental is the biggest, but Depression, depending on what level of depression you deal with, um, affects your body. It affects your health. It really, really does. Um, you know, and going back, you know, after, after um, my trauma 14, let's hop to, let's fast forward. My first time uh, attempting suicide. My first time attempting suicide was, uh, out at, and this is not to add any drama to the story, but actually it was the morning of 9-11. It actually, I promised to God it was the morning of 9-11 was my first time where um, I, I was ready to commit suicide. Um, and, it, and it happened before the, the attack on the Twin Towers. I was actually at my parents' house. Um, thank you. Um, I was actually at my parents' house. I was, uh, I believe I was 19 time. And uh, my dad had a gun. And I was, and the situation had happened that like I was just out of my mind. A situation happened. I felt like, you know, nobody was there. Uh, my parents didn't understand. My family didn't understand. Um, and I was just tired. I was just tired and exhausted and drained. I went and got my dad's gun. And um, I sat in what we consider the family room, the, the den. 
And I actually put my dad's gun to my head. I actually, I put the, my dad's gun to my head and I pulled the trigger. That would, is, in that moment, I would say would be, would have been one of my more, most tangible God moments, God experiences. Because I pulled the trigger and nothing happened. Nothing happened. Like the, the I, let's go through all of it. The safety was off. I made sure the safety was off. There were bullets in the gun. And I put the gun in my head. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm tired of dealing with the religious stuff. I'm tired of dealing with my family. I'm tired of dealing with the inner struggles that I'm having. Um, and I pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. And in that moment, I dropped the gun and I, I cried profusely, like just cried and cried and cried. And like an hour or so later, just to have my dad call me. I, at the time, I was upset. I didn't want to talk to my dad Uh but I and when he called back again, I answered the phone and I answered the phone. He told me he, hey, look at the TV, and he was like, you know, the twin, the twin, one of the twin towers just got hit. And I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. I don't care. I'm over here dealing with my own issue. I'm over here dealing with my own thing. Um, and so he's like, no, turn on, turn on, turn on. So I turned on, and then that whole type, that whole thing was going on with the event was going to twin towers. Fast forward a couple years later. Um, was my first time being diagnosed with depression. Uh, at that time, I had literally slept six months of my life away uh, in my parents' house. In my parents' uh, in in my parents' house. Um, depression at, the, at at that time had gotten so bad that it it literally affected my body. It affected my body in a way to it affected my heart, and I I I, uh, I started having heart issues. Uh, and the original thing that took me to the doctor was I was talking to my best friend. Hey, best friend. <laughs> She's tuned in. And uh, it was actually, we was talking about, um, I was like, hey, you know, I'm having this pain. What do you think? And she's like, well, you know, my son kind of went through this. And, you know, it uh, sounds like he have a hernia. I'm like, uh, okay, well, I went to the doctor originally to get have a hernia checked out. And so in my initial assessment with my doctor, uh, you know, I did the survey. And he asked, I answered the question. He was like, you know what? He was like, it's more than, it's more than just the hernia. He was like, you know, out of these questions that you answer, how you answer them, he was like, you are going through deep depression. And he was like, I'm not a psychiatrist, but I want you to go see a psychiatrist. Um, so I did have a hernia. Also, the heart condition that I had caused uh, caused me to retain fluid on top of my stomach. So they they raised interest with interest with the doctor. Why I'm having to go have that checked. And in the process, uh, I was speaking with a, a, a psychiatrist for the first time, and in that moment, I just I just felt like I finally, out of all my life, had somebody to, to uh, talk to, and so I was just letting it all out. And so uh, I, at our second appointment, my, my psychiatrist was like, you know, I'm, I need you need to put me on uh, antidepressants. Again, I grew up in church, so it's like, eh, red flag. We don't do antidepressants. That's not what I was taught. That's not what I was. I believe. Blah blah. blah. Um, so I, I shot away from that. Um, fast forward again. Um, I went through another situation where, you know, my heart was, was going through these things and I was like, I was losing weight, but I was gaining weight in my stomach. And, you know, then there were, you know, people, um, in church that had their own, uh, their own diagnosis at the time. And, you know, at that time I, I went to, um, actually two very, very influential people uh, at the church I went to at that time, and I, I expressed what I was going through. And this, in that moment, is when my whole mind, my whole heart shifted about church and church people. Because in that moment of hurt, like I was hurting in so many ways. I was hurting physically. I was hurting emotionally I, I just I didn't know I was having struggles um, didn't know what to do you know I had my the belief that I had believed in growing up that I was taught and so in that moment after those conversations with those people I actually left church because at that point I was being not only demonized but I was also being drugged through the mud by church people the people that I felt should have understood me because they were so spiritual you know hallelujah i'm in tune with god 
And what really got me about that situation was, I was like, if you're so in tune with God, why can't you see somebody that's genuine? Because I was doing, I was, look, let me tell y'all something. At that time, I was fasting, I was praying, I was seeking the face of God, I was reading my Bible, I had changed my, my schedule, I had let go as a friend, I was just doing to God, I need to hear from you, I, how do I deal with this, how would I, I would do this, and I would have days where I would cry because I was like, God, are you not hearing me, God, I don't know what to do, da 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 and so at that, at, at, in that moment between that, what I was taught was the way you're supposed to live a God life, a saved Christian life, wasn't working. And then people I was going to for advice, they didn't have the advice. They just told me, oh, pray about it. Oh, you just need to pray about it. And you need to believe in God. And it's just like, that pushed me away from church. Um, and fast forward again, I got to the point where I did, I stopped talking to God. The person that had, that the, the being, the entity that had been there for me through my strong, through my toughest moments, I stopped talking to him because I was taught by the church again that God doesn't hear a sinner's prayer. So if I'm not going to church, if I'm not doing the church schedule, if I'm not doing the church things, uh, and I wouldn't even really, I would consider, I would consider sinning. I wasn't sinning. I, you know, I wasn't, you know, going out. I wasn't having sex. I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing anything. I was just at that moment in my life, I was just being. Only thing I wasn't doing was I wasn't going to church and I wasn't praying. But I felt in that moment because I wasn't doing those things that I was no longer saved. I was no longer a Christian. So therefore, I didn't need to talk to God because what's the point of me talking to God? Because I've been taught all my life, God does not hear a sinner's prayer. So I went through that. But then all of a sudden one day, I the the being the connection that I had that I grew of on my own with God, I felt it slipping away and that that scared me because it's, it, it, it's a feeling of I don't even know how to describe it. But, you know, in that moment, I, I literally I, I, I fell on my knees and uh, I, I cried cried because it, it, I, it scared me so because I didn't know what to do. I was torn. I was like, you know, if, if, I, if I take answers to the presence because I mean, I don't believe in God anymore. You know, I'm having a struggle because, you know, I have, a, I have a spirit in me that I can't get out. And, you know, all, so all this is going through going on in my head. And at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating again, uh, going through suicide. I'm contemplating, you know, in these moments I'm, to, to try to give a, a, a picture of what was going on in my head. I just wanted to go into a closet, close the door. I didn't want to feel anything. I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to be touched. I didn't, I didn't even want my clothes to touch me. I just wanted, I just, I didn't want to exist. Uh, for a moment, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't want to die, but I didn't want to exist. I just wanted all the pain, the mental turmoil, the emotional turmoil, because it's literally what, when somebody is going through depression, especially deep depression or manic depressive or, you know, bipolar, um, the things that we deal with mentally, mentally is the biggest, hardest fight, is the mental fight um, that you have to push through. And so it's like I was going through that. I, I didn't know where to go, but then I, I, this is what I did because I am a God believer. I, I prayed and I said, God, I said, I'm not, I'm not, if I have to go back to church, I'd rather die. That's what I told God. I said, like, I'd rather die. I said, but this is something I know you for myself. I, I, I felt you. I know you exist. And I said, what I need you to do is I need you to purge me. Literally. I told God, I said, God, don't you take away all the religion out of me, out of my heart, out of mind. And I just want to have a relationship with you. And I said, God, I said, in this moment where I'm, I may be being disobedient, I don't know. I said, but in this moment where I refuse to go back to church, I need you to strip me. Please still let me know you love me. Please still let me know you're there for me. But I need you to strip me from everything that, that you did not intend for us as humans to know or to deal with just to have that relationship with you. Had that prayer, went through life, uh, that was around about 24. And then I wound up moving to New York. Uh, and in the midst of me moving to New York, I actually uh, was going through one of my, like, 
my my depression had, had subsided because I was working a lot. You know, I was working, people that know me from back home, I was working like five jobs. I was working five jobs because, you know, I wanted to have something. But also I was working those five jobs uh, because I didn't want to be at home by myself to have to deal with the stuff that went on in my head. The, 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 I, I was sometimes, I was so tired of crying and not having, feeling like I had anybody that really, really understood me. Because most of the people that I knew were uh, or church girls. So, you know, I, I, I would kind of like pick at, pick at things and say things and see what reaction I would get or what kind of verbiage people would tell me. And it always wound up being the same. Oh, just pray about it. Oh, God is a deliverer. Da, 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 da. Oh, and I was like, but that's not it. It's, it's more than that. I just, I know it's more than just pray about it. I know it's just more than, than regurgitated biblical scriptures and regurgitated biblical uh teachings, theologies. I was like, it's more than that. And so I just, I just stopped talking to people and I would work because I didn't want to be at home again to, because when I was at home by myself, I had to, I had to face reality. I had to face my, my, my demon. If you, if I, if, if I should say it like that. Uh, and when you, and this is, I'm going to pause right here for, for y'all, for us, I'm going to say y'all for us, that are dealing with depression and know exactly what I'm talking about. But it, there is hope. And I say that because I have learned coping mechanisms. I have learned to literally take care of me. I have literally learned to say, I can't help anybody else unless I help myself first. Like, I can't be a brother to my brother. I can't be a brother to my sister. If I had kids, you know, for those of y'all that have kids, let me talk, for those that, that, that have kids that are dealing with depression on a daily basis, a hourly basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis, for you that are struggling, you cannot be who you desire to be or who your family members desire for you to be for them if you do not take care of yourself. And in the midst of taking care of yourself, you have to say, you know what? If I don't get help, and that help, and, and, and that help can come in different many forms. When I say help, it doesn't always have to be just therapy or you know the the the, the typical therapy of but you have to get hit fine if at all possible find that person that you can talk to like just honestly talk to with no judgment find that no judgment person that you can talk to and be transparent because if you do not get it out it will just continue to eat you up and the more it eats you up the more it pushes you to that 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 brink of suicide and the more you, the, the more you get to that, that moment of suicide, you just sit, because I got to the moments of suicide where I just teetered back and forth, teeter topping, back and forth, back and forth. And it was just like, is it, is it today? Is it today? Is it today? Um, but, you, but, 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 but you have to take care of yourself. Whatever that take care of yourself, if it's changing your diet, if it's exercising, and think about this, and that's another thing, people, people that are not dealing with depression, and the people that are dealing with depression, you, the people that are not dealing with depression, let me break this down for you. People that are, you understand this. When you're going through deep depression, you typically don't have energy. Like, you, I used to go to bed tired, wake up tired. Go to bed tired, wake up tired. Like, drained emotionally drained, mentally drained. Like that is what I went through on a daily basis. What I went through on a day, you go to bed drained, you wake up drained, days I laid in the bed and didn't even want to open my eyes because I didn't even want to see light. There are days where I, I, I lay in the bed and I would lay there and I would make myself go back to sleep so I didn't have to deal with the day. There were moments where I would not eat because I was like, it, it's too much energy for me to get out of bed to go get something to eat. Like that's how 
depression does you. That's how depression, when you're dealing with it on a on a on a, on a repetitive basis, like it gets that hard and it, it, it gets that uh, intense where it's like if you've never been through it, you would you you can't grasp. For those that do go through it, you understand what I'm saying. And you really understand what I'm saying. And uh, to keep going, kind of fast forward a little bit, because again, I don't want to make this, I just want to hop in and, and get a couple pointers. Um, wow. You have to, for those that, that, that do not deal with depression, or don't deal with deep depression on a repetitive basis. If someone tells you they're dealing with depression, you have to listen to them. Don't judge, get out of your head, whatever you, you think, oh, well, you do this, you do that. You just want attention. Trust me, when somebody's dealing with depression over daily, daily, and there's, there's, when you see somebody and, or somebody maybe close to you, they're always tired. There is sometimes emotional, and I mean by emotional, some people, um, they cry a lot. Some people are just super angry all the time. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not diagnosing anybody. I'm just giving pointers. Um, but the, the thing about it is, is when somebody says they're depressed. Don't demonize them. Get out of your 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 biblical mindset, your biblical teachings, your your judgmental uh, uh, ideas. If you don't know what to do, the best thing to do with to, to with somebody is to be honest with them. Be like, you know what? I might not be able to understand what you're going through, but how can I help you? Like you have to like no matter what your schedule is like, if that if that person is that person that you love and you say you love them, you have to be intentional about listening and letting them know I hear you, I am listening to you, I see you. And if you don't understand, say you don't understand, but be like you know what, whatever I can do to help you. If that's simply going to therapy with that person, go to therapy with that person. If that's, you know, hey, you know, let's do some exercises. If they if they just go to their go to their house and just sit with them and don't even say nothing. If they say, you know what, what I need somebody right now is somebody just to physically be in my presence. I don't want to talk. I don't want to laugh. I just want to sit. Be that person for them. Uh and, and that's just that's just uh, that's one pit, uh, tidbit of advice uh, that I can give to those that don't that don't really understand uh, what going through uh, repetitive depression. And there's there's several different uh, uh, diagnoses of depression. Um, Mine is more of a uh, a long term. Uh, I'm not going to say uh, life. I'm going to say uh, Long term, uh, then you have again you have bipolar. Bipolar actually has two different types of bipolar. Uh, it, 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 so if you if you want to know, number one, Google, Google uh, different types of depression, and then also you can read a book. It's called the DSM five book. I believe I said the right DSM five uh, that gives a literally a breakdown of just about every depressive uh, symptom that they're out Because you would be surprised of how many different uh, de depression uh, categories, I, I guess, is, is how I should put it. Uh, should put it. Um, but yeah, if you want to actually literally know more, do that. Google will be your best friend. And I'm telling you something else too. For y'all to say that y'all really love people that you know that, we, that, may, that, you, that may be going through depression, your actions speak louder than words. If if that ever meant anything to anybody, people that are uh, 
that deal with depression on a daily, weekly, hourly basis, yearly basis, what you do means way more than what you say. So you can say all day, I'm this, I'm that, um, but if your actions don't line up with what you say, it's a lie. We consider it as a lie. We consider it as a disappointment. Um, another another quick thing to hop on, uh, so I'm looking at time, I don't want to hold y'all too long. Another thing is um, somebody, please do research on what depression is. Please, please, please. Because someone close to me uh, made a statement that it hurt because I know it came from an ignorant place. I, I didn't let it really affect me or I didn't really hold on to it. But they was, we was together and, talking to and a church person, um, he was like, I can't, I can't see how somebody's going to let a demon cause, I ain't letting no demon in hell cause, uh, cause me to commit suicide. And I was like, wow, huh, really? But you have somebody here in your face that's attempted suicide twice, thought about it on several different times. Uh, but the thing about it is, is you're judging. But from me looking at you, you're dealing with depression as well. But the level you're de dealing with depression on is that it hinders you from moving forward. It hinders you from doing things that you need to do and you're stuck. You're stuck where you are. And that stuckness, you keep praying to God and you, and you feel like God ain't answered, but God and I already told you to answer, but you know, because you're dealing with depression and you don't want to admit to your own self that you're dealing with depression because again, depression is, is, is demonized. You know, if you're going through depression, you know, you must got a demon in you. Going to depression, you must not be doing something right. Hmm. What if you're doing everything right and you're still depressed? So please inform, get, inform yourself on depression, the many levels of depression, not the depression that you see on TV that they uh, diagnose appeal to. It is deeper than that. It's deeper than appeal. Uh, because when I first, matter of fact, I had to wind up, you know, antidepressants. And when I first got on antidepressants, I actually had to go through three trials. The first one, uh, I was totally like, I would be at home just like, like numb. So I told him like, this ain't gonna work. It freaked me out. I was like, ah, nah. Because I would just come and I would find myself just sitting in my living room, looking at my wall. And I find myself, I don't fell asleep and I woke up. And that would be like my whole day. Well, I would, I would do that when I first got on my first and person, I would, I would just, I was being a daze, I'd be spaced out, I'd be out of it. And then I told my doctor, so then they switched me. That one wouldn't happen. Um, so then they switched me again and finally got on one that, that helped. Um, but it's more than that. But then also when I got on my antidepressants, I had to implement other things. And those other things where I had to look at my diet because your diet and what you eat, like, I'm not a health advocate. I'm not a health coach. So I'm going by what I've experienced. What I've, Your eating habits actually will, if you're dealing with depression, foods that you eat, certain foods actually do help with depression. It, that is a personal fact that I found out. Because the thing is, when I was going through my deepest moments of depression, I was like, okay, what can I do to get out of this? You know, because I, I, either if I don't get out, cause I had an option. Either try with all I had to get better or die. That's all I had. And my get better was more than was was more, more than religion. My get better was was exercise when I could, because it, it took me a while to start exercising. Uh it, it was changing food, like not when I say changing my diet, like I literally got on Google and I was like, you know, um, I, uh, what, what foods are great for depression? Start doing that. What else is, and I started doing, and I was like, because there was a yearning for me that I had to get better, that I wanted to get better. And I did this journey, uh, by myself, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, because I, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't tell nobody. Like at that moment, I was like, I'm not going to tell nobody because, you know, you tell somebody, then they'll, they'll be, they'll start, uh, they go, oh, you okay? You okay? I was like, and that, that's one thing. Like, I hate 
people that give people. I hate sympathy parties. Don't give me a sympathy party. Like don't. I I don't I don't, I don't like people. I, I, I was like I don't I didn't want that. I didn't want like every time I you know I might get upset. Then, oh, you must and you must be having a depressive episode. No, I'm just upset because you can wrong for what you did. Like you know like. So, like, there was so many, like, reasons why. And then also, I, there were people that I didn't want to seem weak to. You know, that stigma, you're weak if you're depressed. I didn't want to seem weak to people. Um, so I, I didn't I didn't talk about it for a while. I didn't. So the what, what helped me was because I uh, am a believer in God, um, I, I, I really, I really... Um, I, I, I really got into meditation. I re-examined what prayer looked like between me and God. Uh, I, I really looked at that. And, and what I mean by that is my prayer between me and God was not always a tongue-filled uh, prayer. My tongue, my time, my, excuse me, my prayer time with God was, was not always on my knees for hours at a time. My my time with God or my my talks, my prayers with God weren't always tarrying. Sometimes it was just like, you know what? God, I'm here. I'm here today. I need your help. You don't help me. You, you already know what, what's going to happen. You know, so I reevaluated that. Um, again, I, I, I started doing exercises when I could because, again, starting this, Starting that journey of getting better was not easy. Even though I'm giving these pointers, I, I'm letting you know that when people decide to start to get better, it's not an easy journey. It's not because you, there are so many still mental and emotional things that they're fighting. To just like you know, like with me, I would set a goal to exercise or whatever, and and I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Sometimes I wouldn't make that goal. And that would make me feel even worse because then I would I would self beat myself. You, you should have did that. Da, 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 da. I would tell myself so like, you know, you supposed to be doing this. And you, you must don't really want to be better because you did. You would. And the thing is, like, I had to learn how to have mercy and compassion for myself. I did because I was never taught that. I was never told that growing up. We always talk about how God has grace for us, how God is this, how God is loving. But who talks about having grace for yourself? Who talks about having love for yourself? Who teaches that? Who talks about that? What does that look like? To have love and compassion for your own self, because how can I get better when I'm beating my own self down internally, mentally, just beating myself down. But I had to, I, I got to that point where one day I was I was um matter of fact I was in a class. Had nothing to do with church. My epiphany came from some I wasn't even in church, y'all. I had an epiphany. God said, Look, learn how to have compassion for yourself. Learn how to have grace for yourself. And that, that, and when I, I, would that hit me? I really, like, huh? And then, and then it just so happened, I went to, I went to therapy. I uh, believe that, that, that following week, we got there, and my therapist said something uh, uh, very, very similar. And uh, he was just, just, doing a, just giving me general advice. And he was just like, you know, um, I think that the people need to, need to have more time and patience with their own self. That's what really helps people that's dealing with depression. And I said, oh, oh, okay, Lord, I hear you. But in church, one from a church person, one from the Bible. I'm just saying, and I'm doing, I, I just, because it's people I need, especially people that go to church, please stop making everything as simple as pray about it, read your Bible. Fast. It's more than that. If you really want to help people, get that out of your 
pray about it. I want you, if you ever prayed about some church people, that go to church, my religious people, my devout Christians, Catholic, whoever, pray this prayer. God, help me to get past and see past my prejudice and help me forget the ignorant theolo theological teachings that I've been taught, that I've inherited, that I have, have, have allowed to make a part of my life that's hurting others. That's hurting others. If you really want to help people, stop judging everybody by theological teachings. Stop judging people by what you think or how you see or how you feel they should act and how they should look. If they don't look this way, if they don't act this way, well, you're not really dealing with depression because, you know, it looks different for everybody. Some people have similarities, but because of so many different diagnoses of depression, depression looks different for different people. It does not have a, you know, like the commercial. The commercial tries to give y'all this, this, this illusion that, you know, I'm walking around like this. Uh, people that know me, and it's so funny, there's people that know me, when I was going through some of my deepest depressive moments, people didn't know. They didn't know. Because what I would did, I'm going to tell you what I did. Before I would leave the house, before I had to scrape all the energy I had to, to leave the house, I would have a crying episode. And I was like, okay, you got to get together. You got to get together. You got to get together. And then I would go out into public. I would go to, even to work. I would go to church. And I would have to excuse myself. I had to go to the bathroom. And I would have a crying episode. Um, there was a moment, there was a moment when I was in church. And the pressure was so strong on me that I, you, I, I used moments of worship to have a crying episode. I did. I would use worship for a crying episode. I wasn't really worship. I was just like, I had to get down. I'm, ain't nobody gonna know. Ain't nobody know I'm over here struggling. Ain't nobody gonna know I'm over here uh, uh, trying to debate what I'm what I'm gonna do when I leave church. Nobody knows that I'm struggling to hear from God, to understand me, to understand this this turmoil I'm going through, to understand you know the the God aspect of it, the natural aspect of it. I'm, I'm struggling with things that I've been taught. I'm struggling with trying to let go of things. So it's like I use those moments of worship just to cry because I was going through mentally in my mind that was crazy. So, you know, um, people, well, I'm giving this, this other piece of advice uh, to my people that are dealing with depression uh, because you will have moments of a burst of energy. Or, or you have a burst of, of of clarity. You have a burst of not 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 being mentally, emotionally inhaled. Put it like that. Um, when you have those moments, hold on to those moments so sacredly. Hold on to those moments the way you held on to uh, the way you held on to the moments maybe when your your child was first born. Hold on to those moments of. Because uh, 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 those moments will help you if you just hold on to them. When you get that moment of peace, of clarity, hold on to that and take that and build from that and gather from that. Do In those moments, do your research. In those moments, you know, go out to the park, get some vitamin D. You know, uh, in those moments, do something that you wouldn't normally do. If even if that in, in those moments for those people that are going through deep, deep in those moments where you get that boost, get out of bed. Get out of bed and go go brush your teeth. In that moment of energy, in that moment of clarity, in that moment of peace. If it's just if you can just say, you know what, in this moment of peace, I'm gonna get up and go brush my teeth today. Celebrate that. Hold on to that moment. Because when you go through depression and you and, and you and you're constantly going through um these, this, this moment of, of, of mental and, and emotional hell, and you, you, you find that moment of clarity, that moment of peace. You, my goodness. For those that don't go through it, you, you will not, you will, you will not understand the joy. It, 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 in those moments, you really, you really understand how precious 
life can be, how precious certain moments that we take for granted can be. So, you know, uh, I have talked enough. Uh, I, ho I hope, you know, I generally hope that uh, this has been helpful to you all. Um, and like I tell my people every, every morning on my Snapchat, you're wonderful. You're amazing. You are loved. I'm going to say it again. You are wonderful. You are amazing. You are loved. For those that are dealing with depression on so many levels, you are wonderful. You are amazing. You are loved. There is hope. There is a brighter tomorrow. There is a brighter day on the other side of that mountain. There is. Um, there is. You are amazing. You are loved. I can't say that enough. I can't say that enough. We are amazing. We are loved. We are worth fighting for. If if I want you to look at your arms and say, if, if if there was ever anybody to fight for, fight for yourself. And if you fight for yourself, then you can fight for your loved ones. Then you can you can you can you can do what you really want to do. So yeah, this is the uh, end of my talk. I was looking up and down because I got two cameras going on, so that's why I don't know if y'all know um, that. Um, but yeah, this is my little spiel. And um, I, if anybody have any questions, please, please feel free to inbox me. Um, again, I am not a counselor. I'm not a therapist. I just, you know, tell you what I did to cope with certain things. I tell you what I do to cope now. Uh, another thing is, uh, this is true. For people that are going through depression, winter time is maybe like the hardest time for, for, for us because what people don't understand, several things come with depression, the lack of vitamin D actually really does make things worse being cold makes things worse I, which i didn't know that i found that from my doctor that uh yeah in, in the winter time you know it's good to keep your head cold because when your body you're, you're exuding more energy when your body's trying to keep itself warm um it, it's pushing out energy it's pushing out energy to, to try to keep you warm and so yeah Y'all, let's do this. I really, 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 I pray and hope that this helps somebody. Uh, I don't care if it just helps two people. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Because again, this, this is, I just wanted to, to, to take a moment and say that there is somebody that's dealing with, has dealt with what you're going through. And there is hope. There is hope. So yeah, I'm done. Um, and I actually created an email address um, that if you just want to email me at any uh, at any time, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, I'll post it. I'll post it. Uh, it's I think I forgot it because I actually just created it because I didn't want to uh, do my personal email address. So I uh, I know it's bad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I will post it, uh, in the comments and also I will add it, uh, when I upload this video, I'm actually going to upload the video and I add it to the video too as well. Um, so yes, y'all have a wonderful night. Um, and it was great, uh, it, it's great having this opportunity to feel like I'm doing my part to help somebody, even if it's, again, if this one person. And for those people that are, are tuning, that have tuned in, you know who I'm talking about. That we have had the conversation about what you're dealing with. Again, I love you. You are loved. We can do this. We can. Together, we can do this. And you have somebody that understands, that loves you. And I'm, uh, again, I'm, I'm ending, I'm in with this, this quick little prayer. Something I want to do, if you want to stay for it, that's cool. God of hope, God of love, God of understanding. We take this moment to say thank you for being who you are. We thank you for allowing us to understand our own personal relationship with you. We thank you for helping us through our darkest moments. We thank you for uh, helping us feel human the way that you designed us, not a burden not demonized, not ostracized. God, we thank you for being there whispering in our ear in those moments of sadness, of deep depression, those moments of suicide. We thank you 
for touching us in our heart, touching us in our mind. God, we thank you. We thank you for the strength to be able to keep going. No matter if they keep going, God is just waking up the next day. No matter what small step that is that that, that we take or we have taken, God, we thank you for being there for us. We thank you for cradling and holding us in those moments when nobody has been around, in those moments when we felt nobody understood. We thank you for those moments. God, I, in my moment, in my present time, in my present condition, I intercede for my brothers, my sisters, known and unknown across this world that may be looking at this video, God, because I know where I came from, because I know where you have helped me come from, God, touch them the same way, strengthen them the same way, God, touch their hope that you put inside them, God, God, touch the God inside of them. God, I thank you for being who you are to me. I thank you for being who you are to us as a people, a God of loving, a God of love, of love, God. People, we misunderstand what you mean by love, God. But God, the God of love of everybody, no matter your background, no matter uh, believer or non-believer, no matter of, of, of whatever, Atheist or not, God, you love us all. No matter what uh, people have misinterpreted and have said and spewed out of ignorance, you love us all. Rich, poor, mental illness, non-mental illness, LGBTQ, God, you love us all. And God, we thank you. In your name, we should always pray. Amen. You have a great one. (laughs) I'm out.